All right, the guy who's going to lead off our champagne Sunday edition here. <laughs> Start wow. with straight shots and then pop bottles. We'll That's just right. skip the shots part, but we'll just, just straight it's bottles. It's a little early for shots, yeah. and we're older. Yeah. So, and we're not we're not misinformed. Like we're not not in tune with our age. You know, we don't think <laughs> right. we can just still party like we were twenty one. Sure. So the first guy that we're gonna touch on out of this group is I think we got Carry On Johnson at the top of it. Oh, you mean um, you mean old uh, Carry On Johnson? Yeah, that guy. I think I really like Carry On Johnson. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, he's right right now as of. Today, kind of what I found searching around the internet, kind of a day day two pick projected maybe like two or three. Um, there's some high praise out there for this dude, and then there might be some hate some, too. There's so. some, yeah. I feel like it's kind of he's kind of all over the place. It's again, it's early. This is kind of our early uh, first impressions of going through all these guys and all the tape and all that stuff that we have on them. So yeah, this it's is, freaking January. Yeah. I mean, we kind of landed with with carry on at the top of this list, but we got. I, I'm having a tough time separating carry on John Johnson and uh, Ronald Jones, Rojo, <clears throat> but I kind of like, I, I think I like carry on giving him the slight edge because I, I feel like he, maybe he isn't quite as dependent on a, a, landing, a, a spot. landing spot of like being in a really good situation. I'm not taking anything away from Ronald Jones. Obviously I let it off with saying like, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm splitting hairs here. They're a little bit different of guys, but they're, they're definitely different guys. And I get, I get what you're saying. Like it is, it's not as tough for me to choose between those two guys. Like I'm, I'm, I'm more carry on. Uh, I think, but that, like you said, the landing spot could change a lot for almost anyone. Um, he's kind of this. He seems like he's a little bit more um, what's safe. The word of, safe and just like yeah, he's a running back. Right. And he those skills are going to translate. I think so too. Probably anywhere. I don't yeah. think he needs a scheme. He just needs the ball. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, when this guy gets it, the first thing after watching the conglomerate of of tape and stuff that's available out there is like my biggest takeaway was like vicious this dude is yeah. a pretty vicious runner he like we said he kind of looks like a running back he kind of has those he's got cut up arms and and big legs and well he runs a bit upright yeah whatever <laughs> I, I don't really care i mean he has i think a little bit of everything that you want he's got he plays with an attitude you know as far as i'm concerned he's got a mean stiff arm um, and he's got, you know, power. I think he has long speed. He was banged up for a little bit of, of this year. You saw him go down with that hamstring. He looked like he got snipered from behind when he did end up going down with that injury. But I, I do believe that he's, he's pretty quick, um, and, and patient, but he's also, uh, pretty decisive. So I think those are all really, really solid things. And he's, he's really tough to bring down. He's kind of a lunch pail, hard hat kind of guy, uh, kind of type of runner. He could very well work at a steel mill. It's, yeah. <laughs> You know? He is tough to bring down. There is a there's a, a load of broken tackles that, that are evident, yeah. easily defined on any of the tape you're watching. You know, the contact doesn't bother him whatsoever. He he he's he's got a, he's got almost everything you want. You mentioned the injuries. He did suffer that hamstring injury in week one versus Georgia Southern. He misses the next two weeks. One of those was against Clemson, thank goodness. I was actually at that game. Crazy. Clemson Clemson pulled that out at the end. Didn't know Auburn was gonna finish the year that strong and be that good well for this is a good offensive line and they they were pretty <coughs> poor to start the year there gave up a ton of sacks in that game and then uh, you know a decent yeah. amount of sacks at the end of the year but r the rest of the year this was a really solid group yeah they were a veteran group uh it was a good power blocking scheme with shifts and pulls you know the mo motions that all jive well with with what carry on was bringing to the table um and they did have a lot they had i think three returning starters and, and a bunch of competition they brought in um, on that offensive line, I think it was rated like the second best college football line, and by PFF, yeah, um, I mean, they, is what I found. They they put a ridiculous middle of the season together there, uh, and carry on looked great, and even even gutted out a bunch of games of not being a hundred percent healthy. Yeah, you could it, see that the long speed wasn't quite back, and the explosiveness was, but still played right. Well, especially that that first game back versus Missouri, he was coming off that hamstring injury, and he he didn't look quite as explosive he didn't bust off any big runs but he did score five touchdowns so <laughs> yeah something to be said for that um and then he had he had an injured shoulder he injured his shoulder in the third quarter versus the alabama game um came back into that game gutted it out um and then actually did re-injure it in the fourth quarter of that game and was out for good but 
I mean, that Alabama game basically... Right. Obviously kind of like your gold standard of evaluation when you're right. looking at guys yeah. playing against. You, you want to see well that Alabama Might as well go check it tape. out. If it's yeah. there, you definitely want to yeah. check it out. Um, not saying it's the end-all, be-all. because No, by not by not any means. But, I mean, he. De- I think he probably looked as good as any running back that I've seen look against them. Which Absolutely. I haven't seen, every Al- haven't seen every Alabama game, but I've seen an- enough. Yeah. I've seen a lot of them. And he definitely... And to not be 100% was very impressive to me in that game. Absolutely. Um, he's got a knack for short yardage situations. Um, I guess let's just go back to that Alabama game. It showed you everything that, that you wanted to see. There aren't There isn't a lot of tape on him. There's not a lot of individual games. Yeah. Um, I went back, I, I watched like a couple 16 games and then 17. There's only like three or four, and a couple of them are just like Auburn games versus the other teams, so you get some of the defense and other stuff spread in there. Um, they right. got that nice 15-minute cut up that you can watch of kind of the whole season. Yeah. But well, I this, mean, This isn't like the NFL where we can buy a, a package where we can go back and watch like every snap right. from like the last three years. This is right. We're subjected, subjected to you know what people are putting out there the and, and, and what we can see, and like I don't have time to watch nearly all of these games like so i could take sunday but i can't take saturday and right just, you know right completely and it, it'd be silly for me to come on here and be like the you know i watched all the tape i could find on youtube of him and in in a couple days and even rewatch some of it and and pretend to know everything i could about these right. guys their scouts have been watching these dudes for years and, and have all the tape and still can't figure it out right. in the end um but based on off our track record that we put on 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 tape last year, I think we, we I feel good going yeah, into this sure. offseason about our process and about, I mean, we do find everything you can find and we'll, we'll find more stuff as the season goes on. I, I, you know, we have four days, four guys on the docket to talk about today. And even throughout the last week of looking into them all, there's been more games pop up. And so there'll be more stuff come up and change. And yeah. We, like we said, we haven't, well, you really can't know anything though until you see the combine, right? right. No <laughs> way I matters. can know anything. Right. I mean, yeah, I like to see what the, what the 40 times are and the three cone and the bench press. And I like to see him catch, which again is something that we haven't even talked about with carry right. on. I think strong, strong in the passing game. Oh yeah. He has, uh, I think 55 total receptions in his career for 478 yards but he didn't play a 24 lot 24 of those came last year right and he didn't play a lot in 15 um and this and and to, to he's coming out as a junior so he's foregoing the senior year so right that's with just three years and a limited freshman year really right and and then even not not as much in, in 16 either but the but 24 catches last year and he's a handsy catcher like it's hands yeah. he catching. looks real solid in the passing game probably underrated based on the number of catches that yeah. he had but and in the other part of that game in pass pro he i think he looks pretty solid to me like he's he's oh, yeah. he'll bang with you no problem he's, he misses here and there but who, he whiffed who a couple times but exactly who doesn't but as far as even the, the guys that we're going to talk about today he's definitely probably the best pass protector and he's laying wood out there like and, and i'll go back to that alabama game like he was he got his quarterback got hit one time the arm got hit his guy got around him and, and it was an incomplete pass but other than that like he was one and one on one with these outside edge rusher defenders for Alabama, and right? T- standing and stand, them up, yeah, and giving his dude enough time. Now the quarterback was getting off the ball quickly, and that that yeah, he, I think he gets his arm him. hit in that game yeah. at one point, and it was a little bit of his fault. But I mean, that's a premium Pristine. rusher coming off the end there, and and he stood him up for a, for a minute, but he ended up getting around him. But for the most part, it was it was good pass pro pretty much in every game that I could see, and all and every you know instance and they right. show you enough of it for sure right but that Alabama game like I think he showed you the whole kit and caboodle it was a joy to watch quite frankly which is which is why I think you kind of had why both of us when we talked about this guy kind of put him up in the top of this kind of group right outside that kind of big four ish right. if you will as of right now sure yeah um, there's those four dudes and I don't know that anybody's really it's two gonna, and then questionable right. other two and then yeah it's it's Saquon yeah Saquon and, and guys and, and, and then it's maybe the Chubb two Georgia and guys and then maybe carry on for me I right. think he as of squeeze. right now obviously we're early in the process and haven't evaluated every single player and, and things will be moved around as we go forward but the fact of just the all, all the facets of the game that this guy has, I think he's he could be a really special player. Yeah, I mean, he can he strings moves together. He sheds tacklers. He he can get he can can get low and squirt through some tiny holes for three yards. Like I definitely saw that versus Alabama a couple times. I couldn't even see where he was. Yeah, you know, so he does kind of run upright sometimes, but it's not like an upright style. It's yeah. just he's tall. He's got he's six feet tall. He's got huge legs though. These legs like are he's got Derrick Henry legs. The real but not long. Co- but his torso is shorter. Like so none of that's a knock for me. Those legs look awesome and and it's it's crazy that they're so long. Like there was literally this one run 
Uh, in that Alabama game, he's getting the ball out of the shotgun per use in that Auburn offense. And, and he, he literally took two steps. And in those two steps, he had pressed the line of scrimmage, made a cut outside, and was like already changed directions. So like in the two linebackers, you see him come in when he presses the line because he pressed that line so right. hard. And he makes one little side step, and that's with two steps right. from the shotgun. Right, which is kind of where you get the, some people compare. The, there's been some Le'Veon kind of, which I don't, I'm not a huge fan of any sort of comps. I just yeah. like to figure out what these guys. Look well, he's like a by he's themselves. a he's a souped up Wayne Gallman at best. Right. Whatever. Which I get that. I'll take he a does. Up Wayne Gallman. Sure. Yes. Wayne Gallman looked awesome in the spots that he had this year. Yeah. I mean, I I think this is a, a guy who kind of has every piece of the puzzle that you're looking for out of a running back. I think he just looks like a running back, as silly as that is to say. Right. Um, Those and, two steps, man, it was crazy. I had to rewatch him. I had to rewind it and rewind it like just several times because I couldn't believe that he could long take legs. two steps and make this move and yeah. beat two linebackers in the whole defensive line. I mean, it wasn't quite. Zay Jones levitation crazy, but I mean it was crazy. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. This is a, this is the guy who was the off SEC offensive player of a year of the year, which is a you know a solid honor from a guy who missed even missed some time in the season and and just I feel like he's just your kind of gutty, gritty. Like I said, but blue he also collar. Had, he also has that patience, though. right? He no, can exhibit what, that patience and and make a decisive move yeah. when he needs to, and there's no wasted movement, and he can show you the power. He's good in those right. short yardage situations, absolutely. And the, he can shed tacklers, like he can. You already said it. We already said he's stiff arming dudes, spin like they're just. He doesn't lose his balance. No, it's 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 really good to. It's really fun to watch the what their little tape we could find on him. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to drafting this dude next yeah. year for sure. And he, you know, he, he got he got better pretty much every year. Yep, at, love uh, that at Auburn. Uh, this year he he finished with 285 attempts, 1391 yards, right off of 1400 and, and 4.9 a carry, which he had 4.9 a carry last year, and 18 touchdowns, which you know that's that's solid number there in the strong SEC. numbers and and everything that I've I've seen from this guy, I just I really love it and. He got the slight edge on Ronald Jones for me right here, kind of in this next tier of guys so far, um, just because I think he is a little bit more of a, you know, he's got a, obviously has a little more size and just maybe. Well, he's only 212, but he seems bigger than that. Right. He runs bigger than that. But Ronald Jones is two 200. Yeah. So. And, but he, well, we'll get into Ronald Jones here yeah. shortly. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a break. I think it's safe to say that, you know, we've got, we've got uh, this guy at number five. In our 2018 right. rookie we, we running backs, we haven't really ranked the other guys for but now. For now, in this early impression, we <clears> kind of <throat> have them slotted around the around the five spot. All right, well, let's go to break. We'll be back with more Mary to the game. Shall we get into some Ronald Jones, some Rojo? Old Rojo can go. Yeah, yeah. I know you're excited about some. Uh, yeah, this this guy. When I first started watching everything, well, you know, my I watch all this stuff and I, I go through it all and. My first run through was I didn't really know what to make of him, but I basically came to the conclusion that I just, it's everything just feels so effortless. Like yeah. I couldn't really put my finger on what was going on there. I didn't know if I loved him or hated him or what was going on. Yeah. Um, and then the second time through, it was just like that there it's so effortless. He just kind of glides through things. And, and I, I just, I really enjoy watching this guy uh, play football. So there was a tough call between him and carry on. But like I said, I thought carry on was, you know, kind of a little more uh, insulated. Like he didn't need a whole lot of great landing spots. Not that really Ronald Jones needs a great situation because I do believe this guy's a game changer um, and, and can do a little bit of everything. He's a little smaller, six foot, 200 pounds. Obviously went to USC. So those, those dudes are always bringing in solid skill position players. He was ended up fifth in uh, rush TDs with 19 on the year and eighth in yards with 1550 which is, you know, a solid day and that against a, not a super impressive USC offensive line. No, not by any means. Um, <clears throat> and you said he's, he's not the biggest dude. He's only 200 pounds, but he did add 10 pounds of muscle over the offseason from 16 to 17. So you really like, you really like that. Um, I thought that he did look a little bit bigger. Um, and, and you see him, it shows. It shows on the field. You see him running through arm tackles. Yeah. Uh, you can see... You can see it on a run where he gets his body pulled in different directions, but like he he's never losing track of he's never he's never getting pushed off of his kind of track that he's yeah, on. on his, yeah, basically on his line. He stays 
you know, right, right on that thing. And it's those, it's those like Marlon Mack type tackles where they're trying to, you know, they're pulling, trying to grab onto something or, because he was there and gone in an instant. Right, and 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 sometimes you see a guy go down early with contact, and he doesn't, he's not that guy. He's fending off weak attempts at tackling yeah. him, and he he just needs a crease too. Right. Yes. Yeah, seriously, like that's you know the first one of the first things that you notice is just like. All this dude needs is like a, a sliver of light and, and he's he's gone. Like he's got really solid speed and uh, it's it's pretty impressive watching this guy do his thing. I, I, I do for only being 200 pounds, which, you know, some people he's going to get knocked for being like a little bit of a kind of tweener in size, I guess you could call him. Um, but what I really liked when when you really get in and, and, and look at what's going on. I think he gets his pad levels down pretty low when he's running through that kind of line of scrimmage, which, you know, he uses his leverage well, which provides some power to go along with his game here, which is something that, you know, some of these got some of these maybe smaller backs don't really possess or don't understand how to use. I think he kind of gets all that. And I think the power thing is a little underrated in his game. He's pretty strong through the line of scrimmage through tackles and stuff like that yeah i, I like his ability to grind it through the tackles like he he's oh a quick, he's a tweener there's no way he can grind it through the tackles i mean he's 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 quick decision like he can he knows when to cut his losses he's not going to dance behind the line of scrimmage and, and he gets that pad level low and he can grind out two or three yards like and and that's like when there's no doubt marlon mack would have bounced it outside <laughs> he cuts his losses and gets low and gets you two or three yards that's like it's the two to three yard runs that I really want to see from a true running back, right? And, and when you can get me those yards and fall forward and cut your losses, yeah, and get those yards, that's what I really like. And then when you add that to the his ability to take it to the house on almost, any given play, at will, he's got tons of long touchdowns uh, to, on his repertoire, both catching and receiving the ball. You're kind of holding your breath like every single touch that he has, especially if you're the opposing team. You're just trying to get a piece of part of this guy to bring him down. And yeah. It's usually not, you know, you got to get a hold of him to bring him down. He's not just like one of these smaller guys where you can grab him and sling him down to the ground. He knows what he's doing out there. He knows how to use his body well. Right. And and he's got a nice mixture of patience behind the line of scrimmage. But if he sees a lane and it doesn't even have to be a big lane, like there's no hesitation and he's at full speed. Yeah. Very fast. Vision is pretty good. Vision solid. I think he operates really well in tight space. Like he he doesn't doesn't get uh he's hard to tackle. Right. He doesn't get like uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like he d he doesn't get all uh kind of willy nilly there. Like yeah. when, when things tighten down on him, he's really good operating in like a in a in a really tight space and, and inside of a box basically. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, all he needs is a, a really really slight crease to really take that thing to the to the end zone and the start stop is is right another I saw thing that really just stands out from you he's up to speed really quick and he can stop on a dime i saw several times where a guy would have him one-on-one -on -one and try and square him up and he just sidesteps him right and like, keeps it moving with ease um uh, tackle breaking machine I, I really like that um i like the fact that you know he can obviously get the outside but but if he does get you outside, he's probably going to cut it right. back in because he sees more yards than he's he had not always inside. looking for it. Right, like he just doesn't want to get to the outside and run down the sideline. He doesn't mind contact. It doesn't seem, and and I think he he does well with it. It's not like he's an easy tackle, like we've been saying for a couple minutes now. Yeah, right. Uh, looking at the the Texas game, he was he was getting stuffed a lot in the in the back behind the line of scrimmage that that Texas run D was playing its tail off. But on the last play of the half, there's a little bit of a broken play and Darnold. Hits him down the field on that busted play, and now he's in. He's got the ball in the open field. He immediately makes one dude miss. Like dude falls down trying to tackle him. He cuts direction, gets another good block, and then accelerates past everyone for the long touchdown. Yeah, and it's like those on a busted play when you can make me pay. And and you've been struggling all day to get something going. Right, that's what you're looking for. And they score right. Like it's a, literally was the last last play of the half. And uh, you know, he just I like a guy that can that can give me the tough two to three yards, but can also make me pay yeah. from a mistake. You know, make that defense pay. I think he, like I mentioned, yeah, I think he kind he kind of he's a little bit like like a glider, like really buttery smooth in his in his movements. It's never like right. chopped up. It's always working towards getting back upfield and and getting going in that in that uh getting that long speed. Uh, but it doesn't take long for him to get up to speed, and that's that's you know. The best part about this guy is, is is how quick he is he is ready to go and and that all kind of funnels into just needing the slightest of a of a little crease to really go the distance here and, and I think that's what you're 
what you're after in, in your Ronald Jones seeking the the reason being that maybe he's a little behind carry on Johnson and maybe some people have him even further back is the size and, and you're worried about maybe the versatility. I think he was pretty uh, criminally underused in the passing game. I think this guy, yeah, he only be... had 39 receptions. No, that was 30, 30, sorry, sorry, 39 touchdowns, 31 receptions right. in his career. And it's seven, 11 and 13 throughout the career, which is, you know, I think this guy can really accelerate in the passing game. He's great in space, but he doesn't necessarily need to be in space. Some of these younger guys or smaller guys need to be in the space to be great. He doesn't need that, I don't think. No, I'm with you. Um, it also should be noted uh, this awesome senior or sorry junior year that he had. Um, he did deal with an injury on his own. He, he um, injured his ankle in practice after their third game, missed the game against Cal. Um, watching that Washington State game that he came back with. Uh, I didn't read this anywhere, but the commentator said that he also had a thigh contusion um, that he picked up. So, you know, he was able to play through all that. He only missed one game and, and really crushed it the rest of the year. I mean, there's some ridiculous numbers here looking at his game log. Yeah, I mean, he's averaged his whole career pretty much over six yards a carry. This year he was just under at 5.9, but 6.5 is freshman year, 6.1 is uh, junior year, or sophomore year, and then 5.9 uh, this year, and he's obviously forgoing his senior year um, yeah. at USC. And then when you look at the at, at, at his, his game log and you look at all the different long columns of long receptions and long touchdowns, I mean, it's like, or long rushes, 37, 23, 86, 67, 52, a bunch of 20s, another 56-yard reception, 33-yard reception. He's a big play waiting to happen. Yeah. And, and he can grind it out for me, I think. And he's willing to put on – he put on some muscle, and it didn't affect his play. He might could even put on a little bit more. I mean, Daniel Jeremiah went to go and, and had to compare him to Jamal Charles, which Daniel Jeremiah is constantly throwing around Loves like the comps. strong comps. Like yeah. he compared carry on to Le'Veon. Yeah. And – uh, he's ready to just put his stamp on all these dudes, and, and maybe it's not but quite it's, Jamal Charles, but anytime you're a smaller dude, you're going to get paired right. compared to that kind of guy. And and Jamal Charles was a similar kind of guy where, like, you know, you you would it would be two, three yards, two, three yards, and then boom, day was made right. on a huge play because you're not catching him from behind. And and like I said, I'm, I I like this guy in the two or three yard category, and I sure. like I like him uh, in in pretty much most facets of the game. I think he can kind of do. A little bit of everything, especially for his size. I mean, some people don't feel the same way, but that's kind of what I what I got on him. Yeah, I'm good to go, man. Let's let's draft some Ronald Jones. Give me him. Well, let's take it to break, and uh, we'll be back on the other side with some more rookie running backs. All right. Well, we've uh, we've covered our our two kind of leave early from school guys here with with Carry On Johnson and Rojo as being juniors, and let's get on to a couple of senior guys. Uh, we got Royce Freeman here, and we're gonna finish up with. With Penny, uh, obviously Freeman came back after a 16. That was probably a little disappointing, which kind of caused him to come back. Um, what do you, what do you got? Yeah, I mean he definitely had a down 16 as far as the overall numbers go. He he injured his ankle uh, in week four versus Nebraska. Missed or I think that was week three versus Nebraska. He missed weeks four and five. Uh, returned to play Washington State. Had a had a solid game. 19 carries for 138 yards and three touchdowns. Um, the following week versus Washington, he bruises his sternum. And for the next four weeks, it's a terrible set of four weeks that everybody likes to point to. Um, I think he had, let's see, he had, I don't know exactly how many yards he ha or how many rushes he had, but it was 136 yards combined over four weeks. And at the end of that four-game stretch, he gets benched for what was I read as effort and attitude issues. Um, he was asked about it after the game. Uh, about being demoted to second string, and he simply gave the other running back credit and yeah. said he needs to step up his own game, which uh, is is great to hear. Not not throwing shade anywhere, just basically kind of lifting up his other guy, which is right. And then he finished sixteen with three hundred plus yard games. Uh, he finished the season strong, but it, overall it was it was a down year for him. And so I guess it was bad enough he decided to come back for his senior year at Oregon. They had a coaching change overhaul. They put an emphasis on the in, getting getting that offensive line in the weight room. Um, I read a lot about how that you know that offensive line 
basically just tried to put on a bunch of weight, and, and yeah. they, they got their left tackle back, who was missed. I think his Crosby was his name. He had missed a bunch of time in 16 with a foot injury. Um, they brought in some competition through recruiting, and it wasn't the best offensive line in the nation by any means, but it was definitely an improvement. And uh, and then you come, you see, you see Royce come back in seventeen, yeah. stay healthy for the most part, and, and and crush it. Well, you heard a lot, a lot to be made of in that sixteen season. Once Willie Taggart came over from South Florida, about the strength and conditioning of that program was terrible mm -hmm. through that coaching change and all that. And then you saw a little bit of a resurgence of Royce in seventeen. But fourteen, Royce looked great. Fifteen, Royce looked real strong. Um, this guy's been pretty solid touchdown wise, pretty solid, you know, average yards kind of wise. This is a really talented player, um, kind of projected maybe day two through day four right now. Um, yeah, so interesting guy, big back two thirty. Yeah, two thirty doesn't quite look two thirty. Um, I guess I want to take it back real quick to that the game versus Arizona State in, in uh in two thousand sixteen. This is the third game in that four game stretch where he got benched. Mm -hmm. um, right, he got benched the next game, um, and I looked at that game, and, and the stat line wasn't great. It was 17 rushes for 38 yards, but I, I didn't even look at the stat line before watching the game, and you would have never guessed it was that little yards because he right. had several big, big runs where he got 10 or 11 yards, um, and, and was moving the chains for his squad. But then, I mean, that he was getting blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Like I don't know what you're really supposed to do when you're getting that. You know, when you have no room to run whatsoever, a yeah. lot of you know, it's so many things have to go right for a, for you, a good. You can't run. create when guys are in the back three yards in the backfield. You know, every other play. Right, and then he had a, he had a catch on a screen play, and he almost popped that off for a big play, but it was just like barely a shoestring tackle. The that got back him of the heel swipe, just barely, so it only went for nine yards. Um, but I mean. And and then he he did have a dirty touchdown run at the at the end, at of, the that end of that game. game yeah. Um. So like I didn't nothing in that game warranted me thinking him getting benched right but you know the other guy i guess they thought was was playing a little bit better and like he said he was dealing with that sternum injury and ha had a, a lower body injury earlier in the year so wasn't completely healthy all 15 comes back in 17 wasn't and, completely healthy all of 16. sorry 16 comes back in 17 um they actually had him in the locker room like in the offensive line meetings they put him in there with the o-line to learn about Ske a blocking better, schemes right and all pass that. protection and they have some they got some scheming, blocking schemes, man. Where they, they got that interior of that line is really good at pulling any which way right. direction and getting into that second level. And and any time they were able to do that, yeah, he busts off a big run. So you were coming from that kind of Chip Kelly school of, of Oregon for a while, and then in, in fourteen he still had Mariota there, and then you've had you know a bevy of quarterbacks that obviously aren't Marcus Mariota there, and Oregon as a program kind of declined from there. They yeah. were, you know, but still Royce did his thing. In uh, pretty much every year that he was there, and sixteen being the down year, seventeen I thought was everything that's on tape is is pretty solid. Absolutely, uh, I think he's I think he's solid in the receiving game. He had uh seventy nine receptions over the course of his yeah. career. I saw him lined up wide a couple times, catch a comeback route. You know, and not a ton of pass blocking on film, really. It's he doesn't stay back there too much. Not too much, but it it was pretty good. I mean, he 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 whiffed a couple times, just like everybody does. Um, but for the most part, I didn't see it as a as a lack of a you know. I definitely didn't see it as a knock on him. Yeah. Um. Well, and, he ends his career as being second in Pac-12 in scrimmage yards all time. Um, solid. Seventh in in yards in NCAA for career, I believe for run, for the running back. Um, I think your biggest takeaway from when you watch everything from from Royce Freeman and all that kind of stuff and and you hear the announcers say it pretty much every game that you watch from him is how outstanding this guy's vision is mm -hmm. and you can usually take what the announcers are kind of saying with a grain of salt but yeah. in this case this is probably his best feature like this guy's vision is second to none this boy's got that rock solid 2020 yeah no LASIK necessary yeah maybe it was um, 2015 <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um but I he, you know, kind of follows his blocks well, which kind of tends to lead lend to that kind of vision thing. Sure. Um, Definitely, I saw that fault using. That's a note I got here. Well, uses his blocks well, but he can create on his own right. sometimes. Which is a, which is you know you you sometimes you kind of get either or with right. that with right. that kind of player. But and he's he, not he's the got biggest a tackle breaking dude. He doesn't break like a ton of tackles. No, but he does break some. And and we were kind of talking about it off air about how. 
I think you mentioned maybe he's like he looks like a power back, but he doesn't really well, yeah. power it. He's not super So I have banger. him I have him kind of labeled as the non power back power back, if that makes sense. Yeah. He's like he's got a big frame and whatnot. And and my biggest my biggest thing with that was is like a lot so there's times not not all the time, but it's just not consistent enough where he kind of stays straight up and down near the line of scrimmage. And doesn't like you would like to see a two thirty guy get get that pad level lower, like we were just talking about with Ronald Jones, how he's really good at using that pad level at getting low and using leverage. Yeah. Well, Royce doesn't really do that all the time. Like near the goal line, he seems to be pretty decent with it, and he's awesome at it in the second level for whatever reason. Yeah. But in that coming off the line of scrimmage, um, there's just sometimes where it seems like he just got tackled too easily where it was like you'd like to see a 230 guy even if there's nothing there to just put that head down and bang into somebody yeah and and i don't think you see that enough there's Not times where you do right right and exactly. definitely in the red zone he's money in those short yardage you know he had 60 touchdowns that's that's a freaking number there right but i mean again then at the second level what you usually see is is like i don't know what it is i'm sure there's some sort of word for it this isn't my job i don't do this for a living yeah um i would like to but yeah We'll see how that goes on Patreon. Right. But at the second level, he usually like he finishes his runs pretty strong when he gets to that second level. And, and then when he's kind of in that crease in the second level and, and getting up field like you just see body parts kind of flying out of those creases where nobody can get a hold of him because he's running hard. That pad level is a little lower and which which then leads to like a, another big chunk of yards after he gets to that second level, which is really what you want from your guy. But you what you really want is to that for that to always be consistent. Right. Of, especially from a two thirty. Yeah. Uh, kind of back here, you know, and, and sometimes you do see it, but it's just not consistent, like you said. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, feet are pretty agile, and he's got deceptive speed. Like absolutely, he's legitimately People outrunning peg him some for guys. being slow, but I don't, I don't think he's slow. He was outrunning dudes, right? I mean, not everybody, but he was definitely outrunning. He's not lightning fair, fast, right? Big black cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to see a little bit more physicality on a consistent basis, I guess, for yeah. for his frame. Right, but but, but for the but most good part, speed for a, for a bigger back, and and like you said, uh, I do believe he he creates on his own many times. Um, and I, another thing, when you when he's kind of getting up into that second level and, and making moves, like not a ton of wasted movements on his jukes, like his cuts and his jukes are, are pretty decisive mm -hmm. and usually stay kind of towards getting upfield. He doesn't really move left to right, like try to like dance, run uh, east and west when he's trying to get upfield. And it usually works out for him. But I, um, I do. I can't recall him going east to west and getting the edge right. on people, yeah, yeah. you know, so like he can. But that's not, you know, he's not trying to do that every time. But uh, but a thing I like in, in a lot of backs is, is when you don't spend a lot of time east and west. Because at the next level, it's typically going to get you in trouble. And right. when you can see them not relying on that at this level right. is is like Marlon is solid. Mack. Right. Like Marlon Mack relied on that east to west ability and then got into the pros and couldn't pass protect well and never saw the field that much. See, I mean, he saw the field and he had times where he looked really good. Outside. Outside, but. Yeah, well, Marlon lacks another discussion for another time. We love time. Marlon Mack, but he just got so hot there last summer for a second. We had to be like, settle down. <laughs> given, given some more Marlon Mack uh, yeah. airtime It sounds here. like we hate him, but we don't. We I, like him a I lot. Really we really like him. We didn't want to draft him at the top of the second round or anything like that. So we ended up kind of both of us agreeing that we had Royce Freeman ahead of the last guy that we're going to talk about today in, in Rashad Penny, which a lot of people really like Rashad Penny. He's he's also a lot of big backs in this draft. Yeah, like bigger kind of prototypical uh, big backs that don't maybe play as big as they should. Right, but catch the ball pretty well. So like a guy a, like basically like last year, Chris Carson was a guy for me who who really stood out and didn't get a ton of love. Um, and he kind of had this finesse running style about him, and then he kind of through his younger years in college. And then he kind of switched to a little bit more of a bruising mm -hmm. kind of power style back. And, and then he had kind of all the facets of the game covered. And this is what I would like to see kind of Royce Freeman and Rashad Penny kind of pick up and, and, and learn how to do not that Freeman. I like Freeman's uh, running style a little bit more than I like Penny's running style, but I would like to see him get a little more vicious and have that carry on Johnson mentality about himself where, you know, Vicious. Yeah. I like right. that. I like that. All right. Well, uh, that'll do it for Royce Freeman. Let's go ahead and take a quick short bathroom break, 
And we'll be back to uh, break down a little Rashad Copper Penny for your pleasure. All right, let's uh, let's keep this train moving. We got a nice uh, nice day of rookie talk behind us. Let's keep let's let's get this last guy on the list. We got a little Rashad Penny. Um, I've been kind of experimenting with my research style. I mean, there's so much. There's there's a lot of individual games you can watch. There's the highlight tape. You can look a lot into the game logs and what the offense is about and everything. But I tried I tried just straight watching a bunch of games on this guy Rashad Penny, and I came away uh, on my initial run through of all those games with like I, I didn't know what to write I didn't know what to I didn't know what to think I didn't know what to, my opinion was on him um, I did go back and rewatch some stuff and actually form an opinion but I, I'd like to to hear what you have Casey on on your initial reactions of Rashad Penny and, and, and see, hear your breakdown a little bit of what he's bringing to the table and all right well <clears throat> first and foremost I think you know when you look at the overall you know game log and statistics of this guy they're really awesome yeah and obviously, you know, this is a guy who coming from San Diego State who Pumphrey last year, who was a much smaller man, um, kind of, you know, produced similarly to uh, Penny. Uh, Penny, you know, finished a little better. But this is the first, the only school in FBS history to produce back to back 2000 yard rushers. So uh, not taking anything away from either one of those guys. Um, but the the competition is a little lesser than some of these other guys that we've been talking about and uh, you know I, I my i guess my biggest knock on this guy is that sometimes especially against when you see him playing against maybe a little bit stiffer competition mm-hmm. that i feel like he's really electric and he's a game breaker and you got a key on him and all those kind of things but when you can get and pressure him like before he gets going like I feel like he needs like a little bit of a runway to get going and then once he's rolling it's really hard to bring him down but if you can get a hold of him I feel like there's a lot of soft tackles behind the line of scrimmage for how big this guy is yeah um well when you look at the highlight tape he he might not be touched one single time throughout that whole highlight tape right it's gaping holes everywhere right and it starts off with a 95 yard touchdown run which to score 95 from 95 yards out you definitely got to have some speed and some 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 lasting speed to your yeah. run. Well, the long speed is incredible for right. this guy. And like you said, when he gets ahead of steam going, it's 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 fun to watch. Um and he definitely gets what's blocked, which they were blocking a lot of stuff for him. Um but for Which is kind of why I threw out a, I think there this offensive line well, sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. The offensive line what I was reading was like they they had a lot of backups in this offensive line from when Pumphrey moved on and they didn't really go out and switch too much up. They just let the backups kind of come in and do what they were doing and, and and it really worked out well for them. I feel, feel like this was a decent unit in, in the uh, Mountain West or whatever the hell conference they're in over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, once once he they 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 were giving him some room and once he got that head of steam, he was really tough. But and, and I did think that he showed you some shiftiness at times and he scored. Oh, for uh, sure. He scored several return touchdowns. I mean, and, and a kick return, like or punt return. Um, he he he's lethal in, in when he's got that space. But I didn't really see him creating too much on his own. Like right. there was that one play versus Hawaii where he dragged the dude across the field sure. for like ten yards, and that was that was entertaining. But like I went I went back and rewatched uh, you know a few of the of the better teams that they played against, and like it was evident that this dude's yards after contact were not great. Like, whereas, you know, carry on Johnson and Ronald Jones and, and even to some extent, Royce Freeman, when those boys were getting, exactly. when those boys were getting touched and contacted, they were breaking tackles and not losing their stride. I did not see too many yards created after that initial contact. And if, and if those guys, it was either like runs that were stopped right near the line of scrimmage, or they were like big runs through big holes. Right. And so like, I, I didn't. I didn't think he he's breaking as many tackles as a, as a natural running back should be able to, and is going to have to in the next level. Yeah. So it just seemed like that. It just takes, you know, a little bit of churning to get the traction on the tires there before he's up to that that full speed, and that's when he's really dangerous. Like right. you said on the kickoffs, right. when he's got an alley and he can get rolling. Like, see ya. 
forget it. He's he's phenomenal. And when you watch the highlights, it's like, oh, man, this guy's special. But it's like when you really get down to it and start watching it, and maybe he is special. Maybe we're looking into this a little too much. But And this this will all change as, as things kind of pan out. But again, like you said, he's not touched a lot. He's running through big holes. Mm -hmm. And when he's, eight, you know, but those times where there are players pressing him in the backfield, he seems to go down kind of softly. And uh, he, I think he's a good kind of one cut and go kind of guy, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of player comps, like I said already, but maybe like a Latavius Murray kind of guy who, yeah. you know, a lot of people say he needs a runway to get going. And once he gets going, it's, you know. Yeah, I think Latavius has probably improved over the years. This last year was the best I've seen him look. Look, he cut weight. I'd like to see what yeah. the weight difference was and, and all that stuff. But yeah, and Penny's a big dude. He's 220 pounds. Um, he's a big dude. That that helps uh, create that that downhill gravitational force when he gets going. Those yeah. big dudes that get going are tough to. I bring mean, to down. have he, I think he had like five games in a row with over two hundred yards or something like that, and th th those are impressive. Yeah, the last five to two thousand seventeen. That's an impressive number. Yeah, that's but a serious number. There, it's you know, I, I hate talking about the competition that you're playing, but some of that was the competition that you're playing, and it's yeah, just like San Jose State. Uh, Nevada, New Mexico, and Army. You're getting your a lot of those runs were 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 really well blocked and and like I said when the, when he gets rolling he's really hard to bring down. The long speed is exceptional, especially from a 220 pound man. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of pass protection out there. I did see him kind of whiffing on some. So, yeah, I, that, I wasn't that impressed that was, with it. Again, also right there with you. I think the pass protection looked kind of suspect. He at times didn't know or make the best decision on which guy to pick up. Right. Um, he's late. Led was late getting to his man mm -hmm. a bunch of times. Um, I, I will say that he was pretty versatile. They did line him up all over the place and he played wide receiver, you know, some, a, a, a good bit. I think more yeah. than, you know, more than these other guys, it seemed like just playing, like lining up as a receiver, not a back out of the backfield. Yeah. Um, I didn't see too and much. I thought he had he decent only, hands. He had, he had 42 catches over his career. Yeah. Um but but I did think a lot of that was handsy catching. Um I'm always looking for do you let that thing get up on your body or do you you go snatch it out of the air? So I think he's he's right in line with these other guys we've been talking about as of, as far as all these dudes can catch. I think it's just I think we're just going to see this more and more cuz these boys know right. that they got to catch the ball. Like, yeah, I mean that's that's something to absolutely for sure when we came into this we were like we were talking about well he can catch it, well he can catch it, well he can catch it and it's like all these guys can kind of catch it. It's kind of a prerequisite at this point. Like, right. if you're an RB, you got to be able to catch the ball. And you know, like Darius Geis doesn't have a ton of pass catching things on his resume, but Darius Geis could catch the football. Like right. Leonard Fournette could catch the football. Like, right. Just because they don't do it doesn't mean that they can't catch the football. Right. Obviously, you know Saquon can catch the football because they threw it to him a good bit. But all these guys are super athletic. At one point in their at time in their f football career, they probably played a different position, maybe mm -hmm. receiver or quarterback or you know whatever. But these, these these guys can all pretty much catch it. So it's like one of those things where you're like, oh, well, he's a really good pass catcher. Some of these guys are better cat pass catchers than others. And as we talked about at the top of the program with carry on, he looks pretty natural catching the ball. And I think Ronald Jones was underused catching the ball. Rashad doesn't look bad catching the ball at all. Yeah, I agree. That's um, that's one thing I was impressed with a little bit. Um and I just there was other things I wasn't impressed with, and and and. Well, we gave we gave Royce Freeman the the shout out on the vision and following your blockers, and you know I guess I gotta give I gotta give Rashad Penny some some of that same do decent decent vision. I think Freeman's vision's a little better, better competition, and and all that, so on and so forth. But you know, can't take anything. He still you, when when those holes are there, you still gotta run through right. them and, and know where yeah. to go and what to do and, and follow them. And so I'm, I know there's a conglomerate of people who think that this guy's like maybe could even be like the third fourth best back in this thing and yeah, i, 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 I kind of got that. him i kind of got him a little lower than that after watching us everything that i possibly could from him yeah um, i could i could see i mean we we're still early and i don't know how you could have possibly have a, an opinion on every single skill position player coming right. out at this point you know we kind of picked four or five guys to look into which we um, thought were maybe possibly the next tier of guys here, which is why we're talking about them. Right, and I think I've got him at the bottom of this tier. And I'm, I could I'm see, definitely in agreement. I could see us finding some other dudes that we move up above him. You know, moving him in, moving other guys into this tier, and maybe him down. I don't. I could see maybe he. But what about his size adjusted speed score? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we won't really know anything until we get to the combine. But uh, <laughs> sarcasm for but, your pleasure. But, but again, like I, you know, we I started off with kind of talking about the Pumphrey thing, 
and 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 all that stuff. The San Diego State blocking. Um, he led the college football in, in rushing last year. He had a high yards per attempt as well. Um, so I'm not taking anything away from Penny, but San Diego State has, has been decent at running the ball all over the last couple of years. He has he had, for his career it was average of 7.5 yards per carry. I wonder what his yards before contact per carry was. Yeah. I bet it was pretty strong. It's like you said when you watch the rest of these guys, their contact is a lot Doesn't heavier than him. right. And, and it doesn't and trip what's going on with, and, with and Penny. And yeah, you see him dragging some guys and you see him doing some other things that are like, oh, that's kind of cool. But then when you get the whole story, I feel like it tells paints a different picture. Right. And which, that's is why we, which is why we I think we both agree he's at and the bottom. Obviously, we both could be dead wrong. He could be the best back in this class. But that's yeah, that, that was that was my evaluation. And you and I kind of came away with with the same uh, takeaway, really. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. We do that. Uh, we do that almost suspectly here at Married to the Game. But what know. can you do? It's kind of why we're friends. We think the same way about some stuff. So, <laughs> All right. Well, I think that'll uh, do it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed our first crack at taking some rookie talk. We're on it earlier than we were last year. For yeah. your pleasure. Be sure to uh, hit us up on iTunes. Give us a five-star review. You don't even have to write a review anymore. You can just, just go click down the five and buttons. click those five stars. I did want to give a quick... I've done a little Akram Wadley and a little uh, Justin Jackson. I, I think both of those guys are pretty interesting guys to uh, look at. And Justin Jackson could definitely factor up up into this uh, echelon here of maybe passing Penny of quite possibly. I haven't dove really too heavy into him. But what I saw initially was pretty decent, pretty versatile guy yeah. uh, over at Northwestern. And Wadley's a little smaller kind of back, but a little bit more like a Ronald Jones kind of player. So that he both interesting guys. Yeah, we, Justin Jackson was the fifth player. We always have like an extra guy just in case we don't take forever or have extra time, which we didn't get to him this week. Um, I, I started looking into his, some of his game logs and stuff. Some of that looks pretty impressive. Yeah, he, but haven't delved into much of that yet. We're Good pass catcher. Slow and steady is the course here at Married to the Game, but we're going to be coming at you every week. Um, Quick shout out, shout out to uh, Martez Carter over at Grambling. Interesting tape there to to yeah. lay your eyes on a little bit. I didn't really break it down, but just as he's fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. So nice. All right. Well, uh, we're not just on iTunes. Go hit subscribe on any of your other platforms of choice. Podbean, YouTube, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, the YouTubes. For your pleasure. Uh, you got anything else? Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We have our own individual handles. You can find Casey at IMC Myers. You can find me at Dynasty Big Co. <laughs> <laughs> he is not at Dynasty Big Co. He is at Jay Wayne's World. And the third member of our crew who is missing, yeah. Mr. Big Co., <laughs> is at Dynasty Big Co. He's just usually the second one we say, so I, I blew that anyway. Uh, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Until next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game.